Hello, I'm Gary Lucas and I teach legislation and regulation here at Texas A&M School of Law. Uh, traditional 1L courses like torts and contracts focus on the common law, which is judge-made law, and on case analysis, or the analysis of opinions written by judges. And while the common law and case analysis are important, today's lawyers frequently encounter statutes and administrative rules and regulations. So we added the legislation and regulation course to the 1L curriculum to ensure that our students would be exposed to statutes and to administrative law early on in their law school careers. The first half of the course deals with statutory interpretation. In some cases, it's unclear whether a statute applies to a given set of facts. Take, for example, a statute that prohibits bringing a dog into the park. Does that statute apply to someone who brings their pet tiger into the park? In resolving that issue, some judges focus on the meaning of the words used in the statute. We call those judges textualist judges, and in this case, a textualist judge might conclude that the statute doesn't apply because it specifically refers to dogs and a tiger isn't a dog. Other judges focus on the purpose of the statute. We call those judges proposivist judges, and in this case, a proposivist judge might conclude that the statute, despite its literal meaning, does in fact apply because its purpose was to protect park patrons from dangerous animals and a tiger is a dangerous animal. After discussing the difference between proposivism and textualism, we turn to other topics in statutory interpretation, including the controversial role of legislative history, as well as the canons of construction, which are rules of thumb that judges use to decode statutory language. The second half of the course deals with administrative law. Administrative agencies exist at both the federal and the state levels. Examples include the Environmental Protection Agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the IRS, which is a Bureau of the Treasury Department. Administrative agencies promulgate numerous rules and regulations, and many of these rules and regulations have the force of law. What that means is that if you violate them, you can be fined or even go to prison. And because these rules are written by unelected bureaucrats, Congress has imposed upon the agencies a number of procedural requirements that they have to comply with. For example, in some cases, an agency promulgating a rule has to give notice of the proposed rule to the public and an opportunity to comment on it. This notice and comment procedure ensures that the agency receives feedback from potentially affected parties. We talk about the Administrative Procedure Act and the procedural requirements that it imposes upon agencies, and then we turn to the standards that judges use to determine whether an agency rule is valid. I am Professor Gary Lucas, and this is the Texas A&M University School of Law.